Hey, I'm Nick Zizi from UnleashYourZebra.com with another book study notes video of one of my favorite books by Brian Tracy, Eat That Frog, 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Done in Less Time. Let's dive in. Before we get into this, please do remember if you receive any value from this, if you hear anything that resonates with you, please do like this video comment below and subscribe. Let's get to it. The main idea of the book is to identify the most important thing you can do first thing in the morning every day. Your frog is your biggest, ugliest, most important task, the one you are most likely to procrastinate on if you don't do something about it now. If you eat the frog, it will make the biggest difference in your day. Why? Because you know that that is probably the worst thing that is going to happen to you all day long. Start every day by asking yourself, what is the most important thing I can do today? What is the most important thing I can do today? Principle number one is to set the table. A goal or objective that is not in writing is merely a wish or fantasy. Unwritten goals lead to confusion, vagueness, misdirection, and numerous mistakes. Use the SMART goals system to create clear goals. And in fact, in my book, I have a different variation of that. I call it the SMART goals method. You may want to check out Succeed Like a Zebra. And by using the SMART goals method system, it will help you to clarify your goals. Next is to think on paper. When you write down your goal, you crystallize it and give it tangible form. Think on paper to clarify your goals. Decide what you want, write it down, and uh, set a deadline. Make a list of everything you need to do to achieve your goal. Organize the list into a plan. Take action on your plan. Resolve to do something every single day that moves you toward your goal. The key is to make sure that you're doing something every single day that's going to move you closer to your goal. Principle number two is plan every day in advance. I like this quote uh, in the beginning of the chapter that's, that reads, Planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. Proper planning is having a list of tasks you need to complete. Brian recommends working from a list. He says to always work from a list. And in fact, he says you need to have a master list of all of your tasks, of everything that you need to get done. And then he says you break it down to a monthly list of tasks that you want to complete that month, a weekly list of tasks you want to complete that week, a daily list of tasks you want to complete that day. So the key is to have a list. Don't ever start, don't ever work without having a list. So before you start your day, you want to make sure you have a list of things, of tasks that you will work on getting done that day. Principle number three is to apply the 80-20 rule to everything. The Pareto principle states that you tend to get 80% of your results from 20% of your work. Tracy says that focusing on your frogs ensures that you're always prioritizing the 20% tasks that are the most important. Principle number four, and again, these are my biggest takeaways from the book, so some of these may not be in the order that you'll find them in the book. Principle number four is consider the consequences. See, your ability to accurately predict consequences of not doing something will determine whether you succeed. Think 5, 10, 20 years out into the future to make sure what you are doing today is consistent with what you desire in the future. The law of forced efficiency. There's never enough time to do the most important thing. You'll always have a lot of things to get done. 
you'll always have a lot of undone tasks, uncompleted, incompleted tasks. But the, the goal is to focus on the highest priority. And that leads us to the three questions for maximum productivity. And the three questions are, what are my highest value activities? What can I and only I do that will make a real difference? What is the most valuable use of my time right now? Principle number five is practice creative procrastination. Yes, it's okay to procrastinate, but you want to procrastinate, uh, you want to exercise procrastination on small tasks, on the low value tasks, on the unimportant task. So uh, there are three things that you can do. You can delegate, you can eliminate, or you can outsource. The rule is you can get your time and your life under control only to the degree to which you discontinue lower value activities. A lower value activity would be watching television or checking social media or constantly checking your email. All of these are low value activities. So uh, you want to uh, procrastinate on some of these things. You don't have to watch a lot of television. You know, you don't need to watch hours of television. You can use that time towards something else that's productive. And you can think of other areas in your schedule where it's a black hole where you're wasting time. You can focus on a high value task and that is, again, you want to practice creative procrastination. So exercise procrastination on small tasks. Principle number six says use the ABCDE method. Now with this method, it, it's, it's quite powerful because it helps you to categorize all of the tasks into what's the most important, what's not important, and what you should eliminate altogether. So A tasks are things you must do. They're your frogs. If you have more than one must do task, you can prioritize further by adding A1, A2, A3. B tasks are things you should do. Replying to emails or attending meetings are often should do tasks. People may be upset if you don't but these activities aren't necessarily getting you closer to your goals, so they're a lower priority than A tasks. Now, C tasks are nice to-dos. You probably want to do them, but there are no consequences if you don't. And D tasks are things you should delegate to someone else so you have more time for your A tasks. And then E tasks are things you should eliminate, you don't need or want to do them, and there's no value in delegating, delegating them to someone else. So as you can see with this method, you can categorize, you can uh, kind of sort out all of the tasks that you have, and there are some that you eliminate, just don't do them at all, and focus on your A tasks, and then you'll have your B tasks, and you have your C tasks that if you have time, to get around to doing, you can work on your C tasks. And then you have your D tasks. Now, for my D tasks, as you know, perhaps you may not know this, is I'm a podcast host and I have my podcast show. And in the beginning, I was taking care of everything from inception to final production. And the part that takes the longest for me is the editing part. So I was doing all of the editing and it was hard. It was taking up a lot of my time. So I had to look at my schedule. I had to look at, okay, what is it here that I can delegate, that I can outsource, that I can send over to someone else to, to work on? And I looked at the editing piece of the whole process and I shared that with someone else and I was able to get more work done uh, while they were, the engineer was editing the podcast episode. So you can think of your life, think of different areas in your schedule that uh, you may want to, or different tasks that you may want to delegate, and that will free up a lot of your time. Principle number seven, apply the law of three. Identify the three most important tasks you perform that generate the most value 
and focus on those tasks. So think about the three most important tasks that you perform every single day. Think about what they are and then focus on uh, those three tasks. Now, in the book, Brian shares an exercise. He said, in 30 seconds, write down your three most important goals in life right now. Typically, most people will have a health goal, a relationship goal, a finance goal. Uh, so those are the three areas that people, most people will have as their top three goals. So then if those are your top three areas, you want to make sure that you're working on those most important tasks, the things that really matter to you every single day. And then principle eight is prepare for your work before you start on it, which means make sure you have everything in place. Make sure you have the books, the research, your notes. Make sure you have everything in place before you begin. Uh, when you have everything in place, if your work area is, is clear, it's organized, you have all of your material, you have everything that you will need to get the job done, then you'll be in a much better position to start strong and finish stronger. So uh, make sure you're preparing, thoroughly preparing before you start. Principle number nine is take it one step at a time. Yes, take it one step at a time, not three steps, not 10 steps, but one step at a time. So focus on one task at a time. In fact, our brain can only focus on one thing at a time. If you have multiple tasks that you're working on at the same time, what your brain is doing is constantly bouncing from one task to the next and back and forth, back and forth, and you're, you're burning more energy and you're not... Uh, going to perform at your best, at your optimal level. So uh, the best thing to do is to focus on one task at a time. Principle number 10 is develop your skills. Super important. Develop your skills. Ryan said continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. So you've got to continually learn. You've got to continue to, to absorb information and training. Go to training so that you can upgrade your skills, retool. A major reason for procrastination is feeling inadequate. Most people say, well, I'm just not ready. I, I, don't, have, I don't have the skills. I don't have the ability to get this done. And then and that's why they procrastinate. So a major reason for procrastination is feeling inadequate. Anytime you stop striving to get better, you are bound to get worse. I'll say that again. Anytime you stop striving to get better, you're bound to get worse. So the key is to strive to get better, to learn more. Brian shares three steps to mastery. Number one, read in your field for at least one hour every day. Number two, Take every course and seminar available on the key skills that can help you. In fact, one of my early coaches many, many years ago shared with me that, to, that I should set a goal to uh, go to a seminar every 90 days. So every 90 days, I'm, I'm going to a seminar or enrolling in a course to upgrade my skills. And I thought that was uh, very good because that just keeps you going, keeps you working, keeps you refining your tools, refining yourself, learning more, and getting better. So take every course and seminar available on the key skills that can help you. And then third is listen to audio programs in your car. Yeah, turn your car into a university, university on wheels. Uh, the average car owner sits behind the wheel 500 to 1,000 hours each year while driving from place to place. So use your car, listen to audio programs, informative, uh, motivational, instructional uh, audio programs that will help you to get better. And the more competent, and this is a thought that came to me as I was thinking about this, the more competent you are, the more confident you will be. The more competent you are the, in, a, in an area, the more confident you will be in that area. Principle number 11 says, use your strengths. This is one of my uh, tenets, one of the tenets of my message of unleashing your zebra as I travel across the nation and, and share with schools, organizations about finding 
their Z print, I talk about how you can find your strengths and why it's important to do this. See, you've got to continually ask yourself these questions in order to use your strengths, to find your strengths. Here, here they are. What am I really good at? What do I enjoy the most about my work? What has been most responsible for my success in the past? If I could do any job at all, what job would it be? What is it that you do that gets you the most compliments and praise from other people? So the key is to focus on your strengths, is to work in the area of your strengths, because that's where you will excel. So use your strengths, focus on them, and you will do well. And principle number 12 is identifying the things that are holding you back. Now, these are bottlenecks. Uh, these are bottlenecks. I remember uh, a few years back as I was uh, in my car and I was um, backing out of a parking space and then I shifted to drive and I'm driving. I pressed on the accelerator, but I noticed that my car wasn't moving. It just, it, it moved a little bit, then it stopped. It moved a little bit, then it stopped. And then I pressed on the accelerator some more. And then it just kept it kept doing that. Just moved a little bit, then stopped. Then I had to I looked down and I realized that I had accidentally pressed on the emergency brake. And that was what was holding the car back. That was what was uh, preventing me from accelerating. So that's something we all have. We, we all have bottlenecks. We have emergency brakes along the way that we have to release, that we have to get rid of in order to accelerate. So identify the things that are holding you back. Why haven't I achieved this goal yet? What is it? What is it? And be honest. Be honest with yourself. Because the sooner you can find that, that bottleneck, the sooner you can find that constraint, the sooner you'll be able to release it and get rid of it. If you can get rid of that constraint, if you can release the emergency brake, then you'll be able to accelerate at a much faster pace, right? So important. Here's another question. What is it in me that is holding me back? See, the 80-20 is at work here. See, 80% of your constraints are internal and 20% are external. So what is it in me that is holding me back? And here's another question. What sets the speed at which I get the results I want? So think about what sets the speed at which you get the results that you want. And then you focus on that. So again, the key is to get rid of the constraints as quickly as possible. So if you can do this first thing in the morning and you think about what is my major, my main constraint today? What is that one thing I need to get out of the way? What is that one constraint? And then you get rid of it, then you'll be able to accelerate at a much greater pace. And then principle 13, put pressure on yourself. Successful people continually put the pressure on themselves to perform at high levels. Unsuccessful people have to be instructed and pressured by others. So successful people put pressure on themselves. Jordan, Michael Jordan, arguably one of the greatest basketball players of all time, put pressure on himself, continually put pressure on himself to perform, to get better. And eventually he became one of the greatest to ever play the game. See, create an imaginary deadline. Act as if you only had one day to complete the task. Act as if you only had one day to complete the task and then get to work. And principle 14, motivate yourself into action. To motivate yourself, you must become a complete optimist. Optimists have four special behaviors. One, look for the good in every situation. Two, always seek the valuable lesson in every setback or difficulty. Three, always look for the solution to every problem. Four, think and talk continually about their goals. So you want to motivate yourself into action by becoming a complete optimist. Principle 15, slice and dice. Large and formidable tasks are easy to put off because they are overwhelming. But the way you can take care of those 
major task is to slice them up, slice and dice. Uh, there's the salami slice, uh, which is big task into manageable slices. Resolve to do just one slice at a time. So how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you deal with a major task? Well, you break it down into small steps and get the work done. Principle 16, create large chunks of time. Uh, block out time in your schedule to work on your projects. Plan your day in advance and schedule a fixed period for a particular activity. By doing so, you're focusing your energy, your attention during that time on that one project. And by doing that, you'll get a lot more done. Principle 17, develop a sense of urgency. Do it now, do it now, not tomorrow. Get started today. Act as if you had just one day or two days uh, to, to do this, that it was due in two or three days. What would you do? How would you act differently? You would have a sense of urgency. So do it now. And then principle 18 is single handle every task. And what that is, is to work until completion. Finished is better than tried. Many people say, I tried to start a business. I tried to go back to school. I tried to uh, work on this business plan. I tried to do this and tried to do that. But the, the goal is not to try. The goal is to do, to just continually work on it until completion. Give 100% of your attention on it, and then you will get the work done. This has been a great read. There's a lot more um, tips and strategies in the book, but I simply shared with you my biggest takeaways from the book. Again, eat that frog and you'll get a lot more done. Thank you and remember to unleash your zebra. If you have received value from this message, from this video, please do like this video, comment below, and consider subscribing. Have a great day.